If you're thinking about moving to Phoenix, you might be asking yourself, what are the costs involved moving to Phoenix? Maybe you're moving from Seattle or Portland or Las, Las Vegas, Los Angeles. Maybe it's the Midwest like myself that I did a few years ago. If you're not sure what those costs are, you might be spending quite a bit more or quite a bit less. But in this video, we're gonna break that all down. We're going to cover healthcare, transportation, housing, utilities, taxes, and some of the other things that you may not think about that you should be aware of in this video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that now. Leave a comment, like the video, specifically leave a comment if there's something that I missed in this video that would help you make your move to Phoenix that much easier, a little bit more seamless, so you don't have to take all that burden on yourself. I'm here to help you make this transition that much easier. Email, text, phone call, all the stuff, it's all listed below in this video and also in the description. I would love to start working with you to make this a little bit easier and seamless and so you can start enjoying the beautiful Phoenix area. Now let's get to this video. One of the highest costs overall would be housing. So let's break that down a little bit for the cost of living in Phoenix. We have our purchased owned homes and also renting. So let's start on the owned homes and having a mortgage and what the typical median price of a home is. As we're looking at these numbers for the cost of living in Phoenix, we're basing this on the cost of living index, which is just random data that's, well, not random, but data that's pulled all together throughout the country, throughout Phoenix, across the state of, of Arizona. And it, there's a number that's used as a baseline. That baseline is 100. So in our case for here in Phoenix, cost of living for housing is at 118. So that just means that Phoenix is a little bit more expensive than the rest of the country when you compare to other cities. That being said, let's compare to some of the other cities to see what Phoenix is, where they're sitting compared to some of the other major cities, specifically in the west side of the United States. We have Las Vegas at 111, which is just slightly below Phoenix. And then we have some of the higher ones, Portland 132, Denver 127, LA, which we know is quite expensive, 176, San Diego 160, Seattle 167, Salt Lake 122. And then if we take a random Minnesota or Minneapolis from the Midwest where I moved from 105. So I'll just a slightly higher in the housing than a random metro city such as Minneapolis from the Midwest. As of July of 2023, the typical median home price in Phoenix is 495,000. And let's look at another example for what a mortgage payment would be. Not on 495, we're gonna do 425 just as a good clean example I came up with. 5% down, 7% interest rate. Hopefully that will go down light, right? And we're paying a little bit less than that or you can refinance. But that's about just a little under 2,700. And then we add 120 for property tax, another 86 for insurance and no HOA in this example. So for owning the $425,000 home, 5% down, you're paying about just under $3,100. Then we can compare that to renting, and the average rent right now is $1,558. That was also in July of 2023, and that's based on about a, just over 100, or just over 800 square feet. Next up, we have transportation costs. Phoenix has public transportation buses and a light rail system, but not that many people rely on the light rail, um, maybe a little bit more on the buses since there's a little bit, uh, several more options in different areas where the light rail is just mainly through the, the heart of downtown up into the north area and then down into the southeast East Valley. But most people do have a car, they drive it to work and to, you know, going out, entertainment, all that sort of thing. Gas prices, car insurance, wear and tear in the car will, will be your highest items that you'd be looking at for cost. Car insurance varies greatly, the age. Um, if you're in, uh, in the metro area of Phoenix, it'll be a little higher because it's just more cars and that's how they calculate car insurance, your credit score, all that sort of thing. So it's probably similar to other areas of the country, maybe a little higher in the more Phoenix area, but as you get out, it'd be pretty similar to other states. As far as gas prices and comparing some of the other areas in the country, specifically West, maybe even Midwest, we're paying about 450 a gallon here in Phoenix today. Other areas in Midwest, I looked up Minneapolis is about 389. If you look, go west more up Northwest, Portland and 435, 
San Francisco, if you get to California, it's obviously going to be higher. They have stricter rules for their emissions, that sort of thing. 530 in San Francisco, 389, like I mentioned, Minneapolis, 429 Las Vegas, 549 San Diego, and same with LA, 403 in Salt Lake City, and then Denver comes in at 369. So just some comparables as far as what gas prices are as one of your higher costs for transportation here in Phoenix versus some of the other cities. And another one that comes in below the national average at 97.3 is groceries. So whether you're feeding a large family or if it's just yourself, you have so many options. As I stand here right now, I can probably get to five to six different grocery stores probably in the next last or the next 15 minutes. So I'll be right back, I'm kidding. And I'm pretty centrally located. So as you go far, far out, you'll have less options normally, but that's always nice to have that a little bit below the average and depends on how much you're spending and how many people you're feeding obviously, but the cost is generally about the same as a lot of the other cities throughout the country. And you have a lot of places close by, like I said. And then on top of that, you have the Targets and the Walmarts, which have numerous options. So you're well taken care of on the grocery front. And then we have utilities at 101.8, so just a little above the national average. And the biggest thing that you'll see there is keeping cool in the hot, hot summer months. That electricity is going to be running constantly. So the two different uh, electric companies, SRP and APS, have a lot of different options that you can kind of spread those costs out throughout the whole year. So you're paying the same month because I know a lot of people like to kind of see, including myself, is what am I spending this month versus being surprised by that electric bill when it's 700 degrees for you know 30 days in a row. You have to keep cool and you don't really want to break the bank that much. So that that's always an option to kind of spread those costs out throughout the whole year. A couple other things that fall into the utility category would be internet. Pretty much everyone needs internet at home. I pay about $90 a month somewhere in there. I can't remember the exact download speed, but I use internet all the time and there's multiple people connecting a lot of time and it's, it's very sufficient. So right around a hundred dollar mark, maybe give or take, if you're a big gamer, you need a lot more bandwidth, you're going to be paying a little bit more and you could probably even get a little bit less than that, but that's a ballpark for internet. And then you have on top of that, if you have a pool, you have pool maintenance. And I did a video on some of those costs and I'll put the link above here somewhere that you can click on and watch that. But you have, if you have a pool guy, you have them come over ballpark, maybe on the low side would maybe be about 115, 120. Two, if you have a large pool with trees and all that sort of thing, you could be paying 250, 300, 400 plus, depends on how large of a pool. But for the most part, it's probably right around the 150 area, give or take. And then you might have some chemicals to add on to that. And then also, and just if there's anything that would break as far as a pump or something, you'll you'll see some of that. So you have to include that. But ballpark would be anywhere from maybe a couple hundred dollars a month to maybe four to five hundred dollars to plan for that. So a pool can be expensive, but trust me, it is really nice to have that pool. When you're living in the heat, it's the best way to cool off. So just make sure that you're planning for those costs as well if you do own a pool. Next up on the list, we have healthcare at 92 and a half and less expensive than the rest of the country. So one big advantage if you do need to take advantage of any healthcare needs, medical doctor visits, dental, ER, whatever that is, there's a lot of great facilities here in the Phoenix area that can help you with those needs. And there's also a Mayo Clinic here and a lot of Banner. You'll see all kinds of clinics and hospitals throughout the area. So you're well covered and it's less expensive. So that's always a plus. Let's move on to taxes next. We have state income tax, property tax, and also we have the sales tax. Sales tax is generally between eight and 9%, and that does cover the state tax, the county tax, and also the city tax on top of that. Each city is going to be a little bit different, but generally speaking, between eight and 9% is what you can expect to pay for sales tax. The state income tax is a flat 2.5% that everyone pays. Arizona is not a zero income tax state like a few of the others in the nation, but it's still on the very low side of state income tax. Then we have our property taxes, which is 0.64% for every 100,000. That is calculated on an LPV or limited property value, and it's not the cash value, so it's a good thing to keep in mind. 
and an estimate on a $500,000 home is roughly $1,600, $1,700, somewhere in that ballpark is what you can expect on a half a million dollar home for property taxes. As we continue on with our cost of living breakdown for Phoenix, next up we have miscellaneous. Phoenix comes in just a little on the higher side and the state of Arizona comes in a little bit lower on the standard index of 100 that we're using as our baseline. What's miscellaneous? Basically covers repairs, cosmetics like haircuts, nails, that sort of thing, eating out, etc. And all those costs that don't really fit in, in any of the other buckets that we mentioned are going to fit into miscellaneous. Again, Phoenix is just a little bit higher on the scale and Arizona is just a little below the national average. Phoenix is growing very rapidly, but when you compare it to other cities in the nation like New York and LA and Seattle and Denver and some of those others that we did in this video, you're still seeing that Phoenix has a low cost of living comparing to other, some of those other areas. It's still growing and it's getting more expensive. Housing is one of those that's on the higher side, but it's still very reasonable when you compare it to some of the other areas. Lots of things here we have golfing and the events and restaurants and all kinds of activities of people coming into town for the weather. If you're looking to move here like I did, go ahead and hit me up on email, phone, text, all those sort of things and I will walk you through the process and I can show you all the great things in all the different neighborhoods. Stay tuned to this channel as well as I go through all the neighborhoods and highlight some of the features, the pros and the cons of all the different areas. And I'll see you in the next video. Oh,